So today, um, I want to make a video on how I do my uh, PTFE lines here. Um, as you can see, they have that coating on here, and underneath that, it has uh, stainless steel inside there and then inside that that's where the actual PTFE line is it's a durable really durable line um, and these are the fittings that are gonna I had this one for a while so I'm gonna use this one as the feed might as well I paid for it already so I'm just gonna use it I could I, I could use a straight where I have this at but I already have it I'm I'm just gonna say fuck it I'm just gonna use this um, and then this one I just got in is a 45 degree and if I open these up as some of you may know already but some of you don't um, take these out you can see it has the brass whatever they call it a ferrule and that'll compress the line in there this this one has a dual like a triple clamp so basically the line will go through and then when you compress it it'll squeeze out it'll squeeze out into here once you compress it here it'll squeeze out through here and it'll clamp it to the face to the face here and then it has two o-ring crushers right there that will actually grab on to the line itself and then this will actually grab the the line itself the stainless steel line from right right inside here that'll also clamp together so it'll be basic it'll it'll be secure that's that's not going nowhere um, I've used this on all my lines I've ran 90 uh, 80, uh, 85, close to 90 PSI through this exact same fitting throughout my whole system. That's this is what I have, and not one single leak has came out of this fitting. Or the the like these are swivels, so there's no leak. I've never I've yet to con to see a, a leak come out of there knock on wood but the really good fittings they're from anfittingdirect.com I'll put a link in I'll put a link and I'll uh, spell it out for you guys so you can uh, search it up put it on the video um, but yeah these are really good um, they, they they have different that and fitted uh, and fitting direct has another they're all together but they're basically sell all the same stuff um, they also I guess they got also got bought out I guess by uh, race flux um, which they they more do the rubber those uh, rubberized lines um, that are well right here I have one right here so basically they do these type of lines like they got the nylon and then it's like I guess inside there they got vitin it's like vitin material inside and then it has the stain a little bit of stainless and the outside is um you know nylon it's not bad I mean it's a nice I have some of them in my in my fuel system I mean, if 
these give me a problem I'll I'll be reverting right back to these so I have these as my low pressure um, stuff so basically this will feed this one exact right here will feed um, my big pump and then these I will always use as my pressurized uh, lines so you know these ain't gonna flex swell none of that so I'm always gonna use these alright so the first thing that I wanna say I, I really did not order this hose that has the, the stuff because I really don't like messing with it um, but basically what you have to do with this hose is you need to cut away I use a razor blade I cut away as uh, much as it takes like basically I, I get it to the point I cut it to the point of this bottom section I don't want none of this none of this rubber to get caught inside this clamp area so what I do is I measure just about a quarter eh, I want to say quarter inch above where it's going to clamp so basically take this guy off of here so the clamping is right right around there if you guys can see that's where it's going to clamp at right here so I usually go up to basically up to this the mating surface of the actual nut that goes on here so I'll go up to there and I'll and I'll cut it I'll cut the this thing back around right here cuz I know I'm going to eventually strip this back and then I'm going to end up with this much hose in there so if there's a little bit that I you could see of the of the stainless I don't care as long as the the rest of it's fine um yeah let let me get to cutting that and we'll come back all right so what I did was I did a whole cut all the ways around this and then I did a straight cut you're not going to damage anything because that's where the as you can see that's where the stainless is at so what I do is I cut that and then I just peel this all back now we got the stainless there you can see got a nice cut all the way around now we can start stripping that stainless back all right so just before you put that in you want to make sure you put the nut in through there that way you don't have to worry about that so that's that and then what I what I use is um, a little bit of Painters tape. Just hold this guy on here. Doesn't gotta be perfect. Just to hold it on. But um, yeah. So what I do was I usually start picking at it here. As you can see, start picking at it with a flathead screwdriver and just just keep picking at it as you can see you'll start to expose that uh, Teflon the PTFE let me start working on that sit down though so you're basically degrading it enough that you'll have to trim it you are going to have to trim it but you want to get it to a point that you could stick the the end on and then you could start figuring out how much you need to trim and you know next thing get go on to the next step
So as you can see, this is flush. That's not good enough. That needs to extend past there about I want I say an eighth of an inch, I believe. It's about an eighth of an inch you need to, need it to extend so that way it could fold over and clamp. So we got a ways to go. I'm gonna say this, you guys would like, if you wanna start making these, make sure you invest in a good cutter cause cutting those stainless with um, wire cutters, it sucks. I've done it already with, with, with just trying to use wire cutters and it sucks. Cause there's so many of them and with wire cutters you gotta sit there and uh, uh, nah fuck that I got those so that way I could just grab a whole whole bunch of them and just snip them a lot more efficient a lot better and that's it so I'm getting close to an eighth of an inch here just wanna give myself enough room that I could if I wanted to, I could give more or less. I could trim it if I wanted to, but I think it's pretty straight. You want to make sure that this, you've got a straight surface on here also. Looks pretty straight to me. It's got a little bit of extra from when I cut it. If you wanted to perfectly cut it straight, I would I would move the ferrule out enough and then just use the, the ferrule as a guide and cut it straight. You know, just put it sideways and cut it straight. I don't need that. I mean this one looks really straight. Like I said, you don't need to make sure it's curled, you know, upwards. You just need to make sure that it's out, out of the way, allowing at, at least an eighth of an inch. That, that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to pull this back some more. Oh yeah, good stuff. All right, now I'm gonna start cutting. Might seem a little excessive by me cutting this, but you'll see. So I usually like to cut a lot of it out. I cut in a circle. Oops. Cutting outside of the camera lens. So as you can see I'm cutting all this these little things all the way around. Making sure no strays stay behind. Look how easy it is to cut it with this. You even got it sit there uh, 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 trying to cut it nah this one will cut it cut right through that shit you see see how that's real like really close to that but when you put this up this is gonna push all this all this up so you don't want it to go past that feral area you know what I mean you don't want that so you want to make sure that you trim just about enough that it's not going to rise up and bite you. So I've already had that happen. It pisses me off because I think that I cut enough 
and then you'll have like one stainless steel piece just rise up and hit that first thread and then you're done you better as well get a new new fitting or if you ever have a problem with that fitting you'll never recover from that okay so I think I have an, I think I have enough I'm gonna test it but I want to put I want to put this guy in here so you can see it's a really tight fit so it needs to be that tight I want to make sure I got about eighth of an inch on there looks pretty good all the ways around yep it's pretty close now here you can see you can see it really good you can see that that little that there's one right here you see that that one could just rise up and hit and catch one of them threads and you're done you know like I said it's a pain in the butt but you know but like I said once you get it all taken care of oh my god this, this, this line will last you the life of the car so, you know, yeah, it's going to take you a little bit, but I suggest just take your time. Cut as much as you can. And once you get it all taken care of, shit, this, like I said, this line is going to last you life for your car. I know it. I think I have enough cut now. <laughs> you don't want to cut too much either because you actually do want it uh, you actually do want it to to clamp with with this. So All right, let's see let's see how this looks. Looks pretty good to me. So once that goes in there, gonna go up. oh yeah that's that's nice yeah that's gonna be good oh yeah that's perfect so here's another another tip and tip tip for you um I usually add a little bit of oil you could put what a lube assembly lube or whatever but I usually use come on a little bit of oil like engine oil spread it on the on the threads a little bit it doesn't got to be crazy excessive you know dripping all over the place just enough to lube them up so you want to clamp the fitting Okay. As you can see, clamping her down. And then don't let go of the fitting. Like just hold on to it and get your your wrench and just start crank, you know, cranking her down. Just hold hold the the hose firm. That way it doesn't start spinning on you too, you know what I mean? You want it just enough. Eventually it's going to start clamping down. And what you do is, then you can let go. Once, yeah, I'm having a little issue with this freaking clamper. Let me turn it sideways. I need to put it up so you guys can see, but as you can see, it's a. I'd rather have it on its side here. I like doing it on the, having this, having this on its side here. Clamps a little better. There we go. Doesn't gotta be crazy tight, but so. You know, like I said, you clamp it down just enough, and then you get it. 
there is going to be a gap between the the back piece and the both of these mating pieces so it's not going to clamp all the way together and be tight because you got stuff that you're clamping together on top of everything else so you have this clamping to this and then you have a line that's in between that and everything so it's not going to be like flush against each other they say anything below an eighth of an inch is good so I have about a sixteenth right now I believe I believe is either an eighth or a sixteenth I don't remember but I usually get it down close enough take your out I wipe wipe the excess I wipe the excess oil off whatever came out yeah that's a nice fitting as you can see this it's clamped down really good if you wanted to now here's a, here's the thing that you can't do with some hoses if you wanted to you could take this right back out just undo it and look and see if you did get a good clamp um, basically you want to just look to see if it clamped down onto the fitting but nine out of ten times it's clamped up pretty good but you can take it out check it and put it back on and clamp it up again I usually don't do it because I already know I've done it so many times that I know that's about the right size and the right place to put it but yeah and as you can see here's another good thing as you can see the black uh, piece that I cut off it's perfect look at that you could barely like right the the stainless is right there so shit that was really good so you could see all black all black material and you don't see no stainless so I, I call this a success so you do the same thing on the other side you cut it to length and you do the other side and you're done so I hope you guys get kind of uh, a good idea on how to do this um, it's not hard at all I mean it's it's actually really easy I mean it's it takes some time because you know you got to get used to it but once you get it all taken care of and you got it all set the way you want it man these these lines are gonna last you a long time and once you put them in like I said like everything else you check for leaks if let's say you start getting a little bit of leak here in between here just tighten it up a little bit more and you're done it'll stop leaking but I'm almost positive it's not gonna leak so yeah that's it hope you guys enjoyed it um, the next one.